All right, thank you, Lisa. Can everybody hear me okay? Mike's working? Cool, thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, glad to be here with... Oh, sorry. All right, you're going to have to forgive me because I'm a Mac user. What do I do? Uh, go into a presentation mode. Just try F5. Oh. There we go. Mm. Yep, cool. Thanks, Steven. So I'm here with Steven uh, today, my partner in crime, I guess, uh, to talk about NFV testing. We have a couple of organizations, one's called Etsy, it's a standard body that started a lot of the work on, on NFE. And OPNFE, this is an open source project that got started about three years ago. Uh, just quick show of hands, like who's already familiar with OPNFE? Like who's heard of it? A uh, fair number of you. So I'm, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. I won't necessarily bore you. Uh, so we, both organizations have been involved in NFE testing for a number of years, and we've had a number of events over the past couple of years. We'll talk about the, some of the work that we've done and some of the collaboration that we're looking forward to do. Um, so OPNFE, like I said, is an open source project. It launched in September of 2014. Um, and what's different about OPNFE compared to a lot of the, a lot of different open source projects is that our focus is more on integration and testing. Uh, like, like projects like Open Daylight or OpenStack, I mean, they're more focused on like typical traditional software development. Our focus is more on inter integrating different components. Uh, OpenStack obviously is a key component, uh, like Open Daylight for SCN controller, Onos, uh, Open Contrail. Uh, we heavily use things like uh, Ceph, DPDK, and KVM. Like. Uh, all these uh, components are integrated uh, in our project, and we do a testing uh, to make sure that it meets a lot of the telco requirements. Um, uh, for those of you who are, that are not, I mean, people familiar with NFE in general, like so, so I don't need to go through that. Uh, so, th so this is a genesis of our project, and we have like people like Tetsuya here, who's, who's been involved in founding of our of our project. Uh, what a lot of the, like especially the service providers noticed was that, I mean, there are a lot of components that are out there in open source environment, like, like, like a lot of the projects I mentioned, but there, were, there was no open source project focused on integration. So that's our goal, and to do a rigorous test testing to make sure that we meet the telco requirements uh, or service provider requirements in general. Um, and as part of our, these integration and testing, uh, after our first release, RNL, uh, we started this discussion in late 2015 about we need a formalized like, event or activity where community members and others can come together to do a lot of these interoperability testing. And that's where, how the PluckFest got started. Uh, so I'll just jump to that really quickly. And I'm going to uh, quickly skip through this uh, since a lot of you guys are already familiar with OPNFB. Uh, so what is a PluckFest? Uh, so we wanted a, a venue or event where uh, people can get together for, for, about, for about a week and work on a lot of the interoperability issues or questions or challenges. Uh, things like, you know, we, OPNFE, you know, our releases, we, we put all these components together, integrate them, do some of our testing. But how does that actually work on different hardware configurations? Uh, tr you know, tried to do this deployment and testing on, on a variety of different hardware and even try to mix and match some of the components. Uh, for example, what happens? Uh, we obviously, I mean, one of the earlier, uh, earliest uh, you know, uh, SCN controller that, that we used was Open Daylight. Rather than using a vanilla Open Daylight, what happens if you plug in a, a commercial product that's based on, based on Open Daylight, as an example? Like, how does that work? Uh, and obviously, the big thing nowadays, or it's been discussed for a long time, is you know VNF onboarding. Like, how do you, or what happens when you deploy a VNF application on top of a platform like OPNFE? So this is sort of you know what we wanted to accomplish um, when we kicked off the Pluckfest discussion in, in a couple of years ago. And a couple of things I wanted to point out: this is a public event. This is open to anybody. You don't need to be a member of OPNFE project. Uh, it's, it's free of charge. Uh, so, you know, starting with our first PluckFest uh, we had uh, last year, uh, we have participation consistently from a lot of non-members and also from uh, service providers. I mean, the one we just had in Paris, 
couple of months ago, we actually had a service provider, Deutsche Telekom, that, that uh, participated uh, for a few days. And they're not even a member. They just you know, heard about the event from, from a lot of their friends at, at Orange and other carriers. And uh, it was really, really nice to see. Uh, the only requirement is there's no cost and in, in, in fee in terms of participating and no membership requirement. The only thing we require is that when you register, you just click the box saying, I, I, I accept the rules of engagement for the PluckFest. And the rules of engagement is pretty simple. Uh, it's, I, I assume this presentation will be loaded somewhere. That's a live link uh, to the document. Uh, basically, talk, the rules of engagement is it's a roughly a page and a half. It's not too legalistic. It basically talks about two things. Like one is that just because you participated in the PluckFest doesn't mean that you can go out and say our product is certified or approved by OPNFB. I mean that's that's not the intention of the activity. Uh, so that that's one item. The other is. We want this event to be a place where people can come and experiment and see how things work. Uh, so obviously, when you try that, things don't things don't necessarily always go well as planned. I mean, things sometimes you find bugs and things fail, and we want this to be a safe environment. So we didn't want um, you know potential mudslinging going on. Saying vendor A comes in and says, "I deployed OPNFE scenario, and we ran through all the test cases without any problem," compared to vendor B. Uh, so comparative marketing is what we wanted to avoid. Uh, we want the focus of this event to be a technical uh, uh, interaction amongst participants. So those are the, mainly the two, two requirements um, that we spell out in the rules of engagement. So that's the only requirement for partic participating. And uh, also the other thing about the PluckFest, what we wanted to do was that we wanted to, wanted to hold an event after each of our major releases. And, Similar to OpenStack, our release is a couple of times a year. It, it, we have a six-month cadence. Uh, so the first one we had was after our second release, Brahmaputra. It was hosted by uh, Tetsuya's organization, Cable Labs, in Colorado. Uh, and, and then, I mean, I'll go through the his, uh, some of the highlights of, of uh, what we accomplished at various PluckFests. And we moved on to University of New Hampshire. Um, and then, like I said, our last PluckFest was at, hosted by Orange, just outside of Paris. And a couple of things I want to mention about, especially the first two PluckFests, both Cable Labs and UNH. I mean, they've held like similar uh, testing activities uh, and certification activities for several years. So their experience was very, very much appreciated. And they were instrumental in um, making sure that the planning and the execution of the events were very successful. I mean, if you go to uh, either the Cable Labs or UNH campus. You go there, you walk in, and it's just amazing. You, they, you, you just can tell, you can just tell that they're just set up to do this because it's very open. It's easy to collaborate with people. Lab setup is, there's no drama. There's no drama about the power networking or any of these requirements. So it was, uh, so to kick it off in those two organizations was, uh, I think, was key to our success. And. Our next PluckFest after our Euphrates release, uh, our release is about to come out in uh, late September, early October, will be hosted actually by Intel at their Jones Farm campus uh, outside of Portland in Oregon. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And in case you're wondering, our release names are based on river names. Uh, we, and then we'd like to uh, go to different geographic uh, continents. So we started with Arno in Europe, Brahmaputra in Asia, Colorado, Danube, Euphrates, and so forth. Um, the other thing I want to mention about our PluckFest, uh, starting with our event in, in University of New Hampshire, we, we typically had a separate HackFest event, like about four times a year. This is where developers get together to hack and also work on their next release activities. Uh, and it just made a lot of sense to join forces. Because uh, what happens is that you're doing some deployment or test, you run into issues. The PTL for release engineering is just across the hallway. So it's easy to just tap on his or her shoulders uh, to get help or even file bugs uh, if needed. Uh, so it's worked out pretty well, and that's sort of our plan going forward. A um, uh, few things on how the, these events are planned. Uh, so you know, typical open source fashion, this is all done in in the open. Our, so we have bi-weekly planning calls for, for upcoming PluckFest events, and this is open to anybody. We have 
call logistics information listed on the wiki. Uh, so if you're interested, we'll probably start the planning call for, for the Pluckfest in December, probably shortly after Labor Day. So if you want to just listen in to the conversation that's going on as we're planning our next event, I mean, feel free to dial in. And most of the activities uh, actually happen on the wiki in terms of you know, who we want to recruit for our next event, what kind of testing we want to do, some of the test cases, what kind of hardware and software resources we're going to have available. Uh, so that's done uh, mostly on the wiki and also on the planning calls. Uh, and also the communications during the event. Uh, I mean, this is, I think we started, test year, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the first event we had about 50 people participating and it grew to about like a 90 was our last one. Uh, so the communications can be challenging when, when people are doing a lot of work uh, and, and then it's hard to keep track of what all activities are happening, so the communication is pretty important. Uh, we do mainly two things. I mean, one is that when we kick off the event on Monday, uh, after some opening uh, you know, welcome speeches from, from a couple of people, what we do is I literally go around the room uh, in an auditorium like this with a microphone and ask some key people from each member companies or, or different projects that they're representing to talk about what they want to accomplish during the week. And I'll just stick a hand, my microphone to Stephen and say, Stephen, what, what did you bring this week and what do, you want to get, what do you want to accomplish? And we try to take copious notes of that on the wiki. And then we revisit that list uh, when we have our daily huddle at the end of the day. Uh, so we want to talk about, you know, I know Stephen wanted to do a multi-site deployment. We want to hear about the progress he's made on like Monday evening, uh, any issues that he ran into, any learnings, and also especially we want to hear about bugs. Like if you found bugs on like Funk Test or any of our projects. Uh, I mean, that's what the pluck test is for. We want to we want to surface that and, and, and learn learn from those bugs. And typically, like you know, by the time we do our daily huddles, like somebody's already opened up a Jira ticket to so that somebody can work on and uh, work work on those bugs. So I mean, that you know, over the past three years, I think we made some tweaks here and there, but I think it worked out pretty well. So that's how we. Uh, during the week, uh, keep our communications going and all those learnings are documented in, in the learnings page on the wiki. Uh, so that's sort of the logistics during the week. And last but not least, uh, OPNFE, we publish uh, official results through a white paper and we, we do it within like the 60 days. I think, um, uh, you know, after the, the event in in, in New Hampshire, it, it probably took close to 60 days because of the holidays, but the last one I think was actually published within like the four to five weeks, so we're trying to shorten that time. And that sort of serves as our official report. So, so I just want to go through, uh, highlight some of our accomplishments from our, uh, our first three plug fests. I mean, for, for our first Pluckfest, I mean, this was definitely a learning experience. I mean, although it was, you know, we had a lot of help from people like Tetsuya and, and Lincoln at UNH, who's, who's, who's done this before. I mean, this is the first time that OPNFE was getting together as a community, and I, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. When we first started, when I showed up on Monday, I had no idea how this was going to go. And it was a little, little bit nervous, but uh, I think it only took a couple of hours for people to get going and, and, and you know, jump straight into work. Um, so this is uh, one of the things I learned uh, as, as sort of a operations manager for, for the technical community. I didn't appreciate the fact that a lot of the PTLs or project team members were, uh, you know, basically outside of their immediate realm of, of responsibilities. They weren't quite sure, you know, what's happening with other projects. So that I think that became pretty obvious after day one. For example, somebody who's on an installer, working on an installer project, for them, like a lot of the testing activities after something is installed was like a black box. Uh, so I think that people came uh, to a lot of appreciation uh, in terms of like learning more about other projects. So like doing an initial deployment and testing, it sounds kind of uh, trivial, but it was like a really good exercise for, for a lot of the attendees. And, um, I mean, at that point, I mean, this is a uh, little over a year ago, I mean, it took close to four hours to deploy OPNFE and complete all the testing cycles. It just took a real long time. Uh, and then we've made a lot of progress since then. I mean, I think now the window's gotten down to more like it's two hours versus four. Uh, 
Um, but I mean, going through those exercises, although it was like a time consuming and a little painful, but it was a good learning exercise for a lot of people. Uh, a couple of other things we did was, uh, I think Open Daylight uh, was only deployed on one of the installers, but he got, I mean, the, the, the Open Daylight team worked with a number of different uh, installer project teams and PTLs to get that available on other installers as well. So that was, uh, that was a good ac accomplishment. And a couple of people, a couple of groups of people, including Steven, actually deploy VNF applications on OPNFE Ramaputra, which at the end of the day, that's what you want to see, right? So that was uh, pretty cool. And then you can see we managed, we been able to capture group photo shots of each of our plug fests. And you'll see that the, uh, if you see the photos, the, the group of people are getting, a uh, group of people is getting larger and larger. Um, and a lot of our events in OPNFE, we try to hit different geographic areas. And, and then, I mean, that's one of the side benefits. You definitely get a local flavor each time you, you do uh, events in different locations. And I had to add a picture of the beer here. Uh, this was one of the happy hours that was hosted by Cable Labs. And all of those, I think there are like 15 bottles. Those are all like local Colorado beer. And you don't see Coors Light there, which I thought was awesome. Um, so, and then also this is a hardware that was brought actually by Intel. Uh, it was a nicely packaged, all they need to do, they shipped it like this, and all they need to do was basically plug in the cables, right? And I think this is one of Steven's colleague from China swapping out one of the hardware. I think they were doing like encryption or security testing, right? So, so nice, real nice setup. In Colorado Pluckfest that we had in December last year, uh, I mean, you can see that it's like a real nice setup in terms of a lab environment. And at the bottom, this is sort of our, this is either our kickoff meeting or, or daily huddle. This is where I'm going around the room with the microphone to, uh, to people, uh, for have people share their goals or learnings. Uh, so this is the first event where we had the OCP-based hardware show up uh, to OPNFE community. Uh, so both Lenovo and Nokia brought their OCP-based hardware. So sort of first opportunity to marry uh, open source software and open source hardware, which, which we thought was cool and it was very heavily used. Uh, so the picture's a little grainy, but like the two big boxes on either side of the picture here, like one next to these two gentlemen and one by the window, uh, these are OCP hardware and they were very heavily used and was, was popular places. I think you may have even done some testing on Lenovo hardware, right? So, so, so that was really cool. And uh, and then we're, I think, yeah, Nokia definitely brought their OCP hardware again to Paris. So the work is ongoing in terms of verifying uh, OPNFE platform on OCP hardware. Uh, the the second key thing that we did was uh, integrating OpenO. Uh, OpenO is now uh, part of uh, ONAP, but the first integration of Mano component with with OPNFE. Uh, we had an army of people from OpenL, uh, both from China Mobile and Huawei, participate, and, and they, they were able to accomplish that within a week, and even do a de nice demo at the end of the week, so it was really nice to see. Uh, and the final item is, is what um, Stephen and Wind River team worked on, basically multi-region deployment. I think, uh, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, you had um, Titanium server running in your lab in Santa Clara, somewhere nearby, and then you had OPNFE Colorado deployed on one of the servers in, 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 at University of New Hampshire. We have them co we, yeah. well, we do a couple yeah. of different things, yeah. uh, we, we have them, yeah, and I'll talk about that a little right. bit in the, in the lab section yeah. uh, coming up. Okay, so, and then, I mean, the basic key point is that you had, you know, two OpenStack instances running on different regions, but sharing key OpenStack resources, right? So I think uh, uh, it's like a very definitely interesting exercise or experiment that that Wind River team did. Uh, so that was our second plug fest last year, and oops, sorry, I guess I moved forward too quick. Uh, our last plug fest in Paris, uh, as you can tell, the group shots gotten. Uh, more impressive. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I think Orange, uh, you know, hosted an event for developers, and this was like a public event. I mean, I, they've obviously done a lot of testings internally, 
uh, with vendors and you know, invitation bases only. But this is like a first public event they held and I thought they did a phenomenal job. Even the layout of the facility, as you can tell from the photo, is like pretty open, like easy to um, uh, collaborate with people. Uh, some of the things we did, uh, I mean, can't, I can't believe this is just only like a few months ago. It seems longer than that for, for some reason. But uh, so, you know, when River Team actually basically continued the multi site testing, and this time around even brought along their friends from uh, Advantech who had uh, Edge server uh, that was hosted in, in, the, in the lab at, at Orange. Uh, one of the vendors brought basically full network stack, including Mano and VNFs, and did some did their testing there, uh, testing at and in uh, at at our Plugfest, and we also had a couple of testing vendors like both Spirant and Ixia were there, and so we were able to do more real estate uh, testing with their with their tools, as our testing community is trying to move towards doing also stress, stress testing uh, versus just like a performance and functional testing that they've been doing over the past couple of years. Uh, I guess one other thing I want to point out, like a lot of the, our community members uh, like Huawei, Intel, uh, Lenovo, Nokia, they've uh, obviously brought their hardware to wherever the Pluckfest activities are, but a lot of other companies also made their hardware resources available remotely. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, the mix for our Pluckfest in, in Paris, we had about half, like three vendors had hardware on site, but the rest of them, like four or five of them actually had their hardware available remotely in their labs, like in Germany, uh, Intel had their pods available in Oregon. Uh, so we had a lot of hardware resources available, available both on site and, and, and remotely. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, I don't. I'm not 100% sure what the what the mix will be for our next podcast, but uh, I mean, ha obviously, having those hardware resources is pretty crucial. And speaking of local flavors, we got absolutely spoiled with wonderful cheese during the week. Uh, it's hard coming back to the U.S. and eat American cheese. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly. I don't want to run out of time um, before Stephen gets up here. So our next Pluck Fest, like I said, is on December 4th through 8th at, at Intel in, in Hillsborough, Oregon. Uh, and we'll start our biweekly calls uh, pretty soon, shortly after Labor Day, at, like I mentioned. And then we'll have an announcement uh, on our mailing list. And also, I did spin up a basic wiki page, uh, but it's pretty bare minimum because we haven't started our planning activities yet. But uh, the logistics for the planning call will be there as well. And I believe the event page and registration site should be uh, up in about a week or two. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the other exciting news, uh, this got confirmed this Tuesday. Uh, Tetsuya was on the call with, with Etsy. Um, as you can see, as you'll hear from Stephen's presentation, I mean, basically both OPNFP and, and Etsy are trying to solve the same problem. Right, and then, and and then, you know, does it make sense to have our own our own event that's separate from Etsy? So we've been talking to Etsy about trying to co-locate at least one of the events uh, per year, uh, and we finally found a date that works for both organization in June. Uh, we'll be back in France at Sophia Antipolis at the Etsy facilities. Uh, so I think Etsy Pluck Test that, that Stephen's going to talk about in more detail, it's, it's two weeks long. So I guess the first week will be Etsy Pluck Test and the following week and first week of June will be a combined event. So we're extremely excited. So we'll, you'll probably see more announcements on that in the next few months. Uh, and then we want to keep collaborating with other communities. Uh, you know, we obviously be working very closely with OpenStack and Open Daylight, but other communities that we're starting to talk to like ONAP. Uh, and also continue working with OCP as well. So, Steve and I think I may have eaten into your time. <laughs>